Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Today's tasting is a blend of 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% each of Merlot and Cabernet Franc. In other words, I've got three Cabernets and one each of Merlot and Cab Franc. Uh, have I got them in the right order? Well, I've organised them by alcohol. Uh, so I'm starting with the Cab Franc, uh, then I'm going up the Cabernets, and they go like 13 and a half or 13, no, I don't know, but I've got them in alcohol order. And then the Merlot's 14 and a half percent, as is the last Cabernet. Let's have a see. First one, uh, the Intrepid Bear Cabernet Franc from Lodi in California, 2011 Vilt <coughs> Vintage. Let's give it a whirl. Jammy Dodgers, complete with some of the biscuit here. Um, there's a sweetness and juiciness about it uh, that feels slightly confected. Uh, it doesn't smell like it's going to be high class. Looking at the colour of it, it doesn't feel like it's going to have massive concentration. And uh, to be honest, I don't get much of that leafy, fragrant Cab Franc character. When I smell it at least, let's see when I taste it. Oh, there's a bit of tar, there's a bit of um, ripe berry. It's okay. I just get this slightly confected sweetness about it. Um, it's, um, it, yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, uh, the, the finish is, it's, it's this thing where, where the, it starts off sweet and then the finish is slightly flat and dry as if somebody has uh, both over-processed it and slightly over-acidified it. It's not, um, not something I'm hankering after drinking too much of. Let's see what I can say that for the second one, which is the second chapter. So we're on to our three Cabernets now, uh, and two from South Africa, one from California. Uh, so the second chapter, Reserve 2010, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Coastal Region, Western Cape, weighing in at 13.5% alcohol. Well, this has got this has got a leafy edge that I was missing in the first one. Um, only trouble is, it's got it's not got all that much uh, beside it. It feels like it's going to be quite fresh and sappy, black currants, blackberries, but uh, not enough of them on first sniff, at least. It's it's okay. Um, uh, it's got um, maybe a bit more concentration than I was expecting, but it's also got some of what I call the cape bake where grapes have been left out in order to try and get them to ripen flavour-wise and tannin-wise a little bit more, but all that's happening is the skins are starting to shrivel and, um, yeah, getting maybe a little bit too much sun on them. Um, it's um, fresh enough, uh, yes, as I say, more concentration than, than the first one, but not much memorable character, I have to say. Let's see whether we can do better uh, with Vechelechen. Uh, 2009 Cabernet Merlot Cabernet Franc. So, oh, sorry, my sums are all wrong. I just read it as Cabernet Sauvignon. Take me to the back of the class and make me eat a ruler. Anyway, 2009 vintage. Give it a whirl. Now, this has got some of the leafy freshness, but it seems to have also got uh, extra characters in there. There's an earthiness, there's a slight touch of mint too, um, and... Um, Yes, it feels like there's more of the soil character, less of the wine making, more of the soil here. And that's not to say it's not a well-made wine. The guy who makes it is uh, uh, a guy called Andre van Rensburg. Who's, he looks a bit of a bruiser, but he's one of the most sensitive winemakers you'll come across. And uh, uh, he hates it when people don't like things about his wine, but he always wants to hear why, why they don't like it. And uh, uh, But here it smells like I'm not going to have to uh, offend him in any way. It smells pretty good. Pretty classy, that. It's got, a, uh, there is some of that, I was talking about that cape bake character there. I do get a little touch of that, but then there's also these layers of tar. Uh, people talk about graphite in uh, uh, in some Cabernet Sauvignons. And do, do you want someone like, ripping up pencils? No, but there is something of that smooth sheen of graphite here. Really fine texture. Uh, there's a juiciness. Uh, it feels like it's not trying too hard to impress you and in the process impressing you. Um, so there's an elegance and there's a length and it's a rich, rich in flavour. I mean, 14% alcohol, not a shy wine, but um, it's not trying to bludgeon you. Uh, it's uh, trying to slowly caress you, which isn't that what we like. Yeah, nice wine that. Um, let's see how we got on with number four, which is um, back in California, Hahn Winery, um, Cabernet Sauvignon from the Central Coast, 2010 vintage. Very exotic smell here. Um, it's, uh, it feels, there's a bit of um, bonfire about it. There's like this uh, uh, slightly charred wood, but then there's uh, a more exotic, almost garigi like character of, uh, that you get in, in some of the reds of southern France. Um, and uh, there's this plush berry, uh, damsons, and some fresh damsons and some cooked damsons as well. And then when you come to taste it, it's almost, it's almost like it's trying a little bit too hard. 
it's very concentrated um, quite intense flavor but it's almost uh, intense at the expense of, um, of being drinkable so there's this baked edge yes there are those fruit characters there but it's almost as if someone squeezed them and compressed them and rather than let, letting their aromas just gently waft around it's as if someone's slightly confined them you know like when you wear trousers that are a bit too tight and you sort of you're thinking I can't really do much now and I'm not going to run upstairs in case the button pops off um, you all have that experience I hope uh, but here uh, yeah, the flavour I'm left with is slightly stewed. Um, so, uh, I mean, the Verkalaken is, for me, a classier wine. This, for me, is, it's okay, but um, not jumping up and down. Final wine. Um, well, I can't tell from that. <laughs> Adelaide Hills Merlot, uh, Marauding Vintners, and uh, 2010. Uh, I have um, uh, not very good experiences with Merlot in Australia. Uh, let's see whether this uh, sets me on a more favourable course. There's a slightly peppery character here. Um, there's um, a bit of mint. Uh, it's almost a little more Clare Valley mint-like than uh, I think of uh, as Adelaide Hills. Um, but uh, the, the fruit flavours behind, they are ripe uh, and they're, there's a ruddy plumminess about them. Um, but there's this, yeah, there's this slightly peppery fragrance as, as if someone was put a dollop of something else in there. And it says 100% Merlot and who am I to disagree? Well, I'm still not a member of the uh, Isle of Australian Merlot Club. It's um, it's okay. Uh, there's a bait character again, um, and um, there is a, there is a bit of leafy freshness, which I think of as more being more Cabernet Franc. But it should always be there in, in Merlot as well. Uh, I see some people try and over ripen Merlot in order to get rid of it, and they end up with something a bit blobby in the process. And they've not quite done that here, but it feels like they have. Um, They've done some adjustments, shall we say, uh, which I'm not sure whether they needed to do. The finish is, is, is got this, there's a bit of hardness there. Um, it doesn't feel it, it, like the acidity is totally natural. Um, and uh, I know that people have to acidify if, you, if you're in a warm climate. But uh, here, I, I, I'd just be really fascinated to see when it, with, with the, uh, a bit less of the acidification. This is where I find out now that it's not been acidified. But uh, I'll, maybe I'll shut up and have another sip. It's it's okay. Um, I mean, I uh, you, you, I'm reluctant to say anything bad about it. It's I, I'm sure if I put a block bottle of that on a table of six people, it would at least get halfway down. Depends what what else there was to drink, of course. But um, um, there's nothing that makes me want to uh, have another bottle of it in my cellar or in my stash or whatever. But um, I wouldn't say the same about the Verkalecken. I'd be quite happy to have a few bottles of that and uh, I think it's going to age beautifully. Just like me, really. Hey, see you soon.